Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Beres and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here, unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. They, there might be some affiliate links, but this is not a directly sponsorship. And if you want to know, there are all links in the description together with some timestamps so that you can better jump to the subject of your choice. And this time around, the first project, or actually two projects, are not sponsored. However, I am directly implied on both of them, and since I am in them, it is from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG community or scene. First one is Pocket BR, a bundle going on with 17 pocket titles. They are either mini zinis, the that kind of format that I mentioned before, of 16 pages on two sheets of paper or one front and back, either leaflets. So they are highly digestible and the bundle is being sold for 15 bucks. So we have more than 15 titles by 15 bucks. <laughs> it's a very good price for a lot of games with a lot of talent. So just check it right away or just after the video because it goes for one week from the releasing of this video. And the second one is a huge collaboration that I am more than honored to be a part of. That is the first ever issue of Random Encounters. It is a 50 plus pages Zini made entirely by Brazilian creators and with an OSR inspiration. You have just great names in it, uh, some that are already interviewed here, like Juliano Reverato, Mateus Guax, but other creators that you are probably familiar with that are Mateus Gontijo, Diego Old School Nogueira, and Alex Gnarled Monster Damasceno. It is such a great zini with a lot of packet content and it's also one of the last titles published together by the Rolim brothers. Uh, that Lucas Rolim is a content mentioned here with the blog post that he makes here. You should check it out because it actually brings some content for Troika, Mortborg, and some other OSR titles like uh, probably Old School Essentials and so on. So it is highly inspired of the OSR community. And on OSR, or actually on new releases, this one is an interesting one by Row Flip Draw. Since it is most mentioned here due to the blog post, we are actually bringing the latest Clow release, that is the Fatality Force, a game based on the idea and aesthetics of Suicide Squad. And it is such an interesting take, because it brings the needed content warning, but apart from that, it encompasses the idea of having overpowered characters on fast-paced spaces with lots of creativity. And this kind, you have a supervillain with an elite squad and with a green light to bring whatever else you want. So what else could you hope for? Right? Okay. Now we bring a new release coming to Kickstarter, although the criticism to the platform is blatant from myself, uh, you know that I have some problems with that, some people deserve the support in the platform, and this kind of support can come to this project that is project by Eco that is Broken Luck. Broken Luck is a project that started during ZineQuest of this year and this time around it is to bring some physical copies. It is a setting of an already present or pre-existing scenario, sphere or whatever for Troika and it brings a lot of content like spell tables, 
backgrounds, adventurous parks, NPCs, and much more. A lot of things that you can just use for whatever scenario of Striker that you are playing in. It has such a killing layout and art and also brings a major arcana tarot system that you can implement on your games of Markboard. It brings a lot of different pieces that you can put together either plugging in your own setting like I mentioned or word either using it as kind of putting together your own system so it feels like uh, the most useful kind of supplement or title that we can use in our indie environment and it is a kind of a toolbox and it has some inspiring art that just the art itself can be an inspiration or at least uh, it can bring some food for thought and also the next one is also a kickstarter campaign this kind of round is one that is a big name in the subject that is uh, mouse reader mouse reader can just it is a game that everyone knows about uh, everyone knows that Mouse Reader was a big success in the beginning, but now they are bringing back a Kickstarter campaign with a box set and adventure collection. And it is such a successful crowdfunding campaign, because this new Kickstarter, it brings an interesting take uh, of box set because it's probably one of the best ways to introduce people outside of the hobby to the hobby and also to bring people from different systems into the system that we are trying to make work so in this kind of round this kind of box set it brings uh rules the basic ones game master screen cards characters sheets and all of that and it is the perfect kind of way to introduce new people that you always try to bring into the hobby to the hobby itself and uh, if anyone is waiting for a physical copy for mouse reader this is the campaign the perfect campaign to get into it and in mouse reader if anyone is not familiar with that you play as a brave mouse or a group of mice in this rules light uh, OSR inspired system in a way and this time around it also brings some amazing adventures uh, with works from Alex Gnard Molson Damasceno and Diogo Otsuko Nogueira that I mentioned before and it is a great campaign to support so check it out on Kickstarter and when talking about gems because I always talk about gems we are talking this time around about big bad games jam 2021 because that starts in a couple of days and the event will be only for 24 hours the jam is longer than the event itself it runs from august 17th up until september 20, uh, 15th actually but you a creator that need or want to make us submission to it you have the idea of transcend distances how you see this it's not a big idea uh, the thing is that you think about transcending distances and that is how to make a game and it needs to be a tabletop physical game or as they mentioned on each a physical game in itself so transcend the distances and create your own game for this jam it is a very interesting premise either way and on posts or threads because this is the format of this program actually let's keep with threads first and either way you can jump if you wish but I would highly recommend you to check this thread out because this thread is by Clayton Nodestine and he explains his redesign of a uh, script change toolkit. It's actually kind of a rebrand because his layout and design threads always provides so many useful insights, but this time around is his work on remaking the way of 
these two. So you should check it out because it informs you as well as make you notice why it was needed. And on posts, we are continuing with the insight, but this time around is by Chloe Machester or Machester actually from Row Flip Draw. And this was released in a post way of discussing their latest game that is Fatality Force that came to be just recently and it also was mentioned here before it also helps an understanding one way of designing games because when you try to design games it's not easily found an structure this provides a structure and in closed method we have six steps to follow for having a finished game in a way at the end being that the last step is filling holes polishing and connecting dots but you still have a finished game at the end another one talking on designing uh this kind of round is on the movement part just movement and exploration that marcia chiquita fajita brought that she explored the way that uh, some old system or osr based systems explore the tactical movement during the dungeon crawl and it relates to the action economy since on some old school ascensions you have a limited time of actions that you can bring uh, between checks because actually the movements or the action that you take is between wandering monster checks is the speed in which you move actually coherent with the idea that you have of movement or is it not well that is the question that the article tries to explain and answers and it also proposes a way to try and deal with the whole action economy between dungeon crawl and exploration since exploration was there let's focus on combat as well and this article is by Primastic wasteland and this time around we are talking about combat and why some systems have attack and damage rolls in different rollings and why not discuss why shouldn't we put them together in one single roll since we are trying to explore different stuff so this article is, discusses a ton of taken for granted subjects uh, like using armor to reduce the attack and not the damage uh, how to speed up combat and how to make combat much more interesting for everyone in the table this is one way and last but certainly not least another one talking about combat and this article is such an interesting new approach where we bring the OAR, so or combat objectives, where PCs have an objective declaration, an achieving subject, and a resolution, trying to bring another structure to combats and combat resolution. It is a creative thing, uh, interesting to put uh, our even to put on our minds because then it can change the way that we look at combat in a way so for today that's it i believe that's it if you like the video like the video share subscribe you know how internet works you can pay me a coffee on coffee you can check my games on each io the bundle that i mentioned you can buy other titles and i will see you all in my next video so see ya